What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, the unpredictable J. George. And as I'm sure many of you already know, uh, YouTube has rolled out uh, some new community guidelines. Um, basically, they've upped the, the criteria for what it takes for a YouTube channel to reach monetization. Um, and I think it's something like you need a thousand subscribers and you need, I think, like 4,000 hours of, of total viewed time on your channel in order to gain that sweet, sweet monetization status. And I've seen a lot of big time creators coming out and talking about it. People like PewDiePie, Dame Drops, um, you know, the guys coming out talking about uh, the new criteria, how it's going to affect smaller creators. The reality is it doesn't really affect the bigger creators because they already have the criteria and they already have the monetization. And over the course of the past year, they've already had their own issues with monetization, whether it's certain channels uh, or certain channels of certain content having monetization taken away or not being um, as preferred as other content. And I kind of wanted to make this video because... I kind of wanted to give perspective from a smaller creator, uh, from someone that, I guess, that flirts with the idea of potentially being a YouTuber, of being a YouTuber, and, uh, well, so I've been on YouTube for 10 years now, um, it's been over 10 years, and for me it's been a lot of, uh, stop and start, um, and, I've actually been affected by this in a sense because I've had my, I essentially was told that I have to reach the new tr uh, threshold um, in order to once again have monetization on my channel. I was kind of hoping that when the news initially broke that I would be grandfathered in because I remember receiving monetization almost five, six years ago whenever they started rolling it out. I was uh, I forgot what it was. I think you need a certain number of videos on your on your channel or something. It was something weird like that, and I was managed to, you know, it was when it first came out, I had that monetization, um, and now it's been taken away from me. Here's the reality of the situation for me. Obviously, the fact that I wasn't at the uh, criteria, I didn't meet the criteria to get monetization says already a lot about my YouTube activity. I'm not a YouTuber. and It's been a lot of stop and start with me in terms of like, all right, I'm going to make, I'm going to try to make a go at this. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get on this, on this train while it's so high. And I'm going to, I'm going to start pumping out content and I'm going to start putting stuff out. Um, and you know, a lot of that throughout the top, throughout the years have been like a matter of experimenting with different content and what, what my channel is going to be. I mean, one thing I've learned from YouTube is your channel has to have a certain focus and you have to have a certain direction with what what your channel is in order to get a following, to get people to be coming back every week or to come back three times a week or daily, whatever the grind is. You need to have a certain focus on that channel, whether it's unboxing, whether it's uh, vlogs, whether it's pranks or whether it's um, reaction videos. Um, and I kind of never found that voice for me here on YouTube, truth be told. I mean, uh, the fact is it's YouTube is a grind and it's, it's, it's hard work. And, you know, uh, I, for me, I just had so much different, like for me in order to film here in my house, it's a whole production for me. I need to set up lights and I need, need to, uh, you know, have my equipment out and I have to, you know, it's a one man show then on top of that, I, I need to have good content. And it's like, I tried unboxing videos for a while, but like, I didn't have much to unbox. I didn't, I don't buy stuff a lot that often. I don't do those monthly subscription boxes, you know, that come in and you can open them up. And, you know, I tried that for a little bit and maybe if I kept going with that, it would have, my channel would have grown. Um, you know, my house is like, oddly shaped like it's not a small house but like it's like kind of condensed in every in, in a sense so there's like not a lot of room room to like run around and vlog and it's not well lit at all you know it's like you know it's like it's funny because i just watched these some of the vloggers and these guys just like grab their camera and they're running around and they they got their content for the day and also my day's not as 
nearly as interesting as other YouTubers are. And on top of that, I'm also juggling stand-up comedy and professional wrestling and all these other outside ventures. The fact is, I never had enough of a dedicated focus to YouTube like I should have. So in a sense... Am I upset that I lost monetization? No, because I kind of dropped the ball. I had 10 years. I had 10 years on this platform to get 1,000 subscribers um, and 4,000 hours of view time, which I'm sure I have the view time. I've had a few videos, you know, get into the thousands range, you know, nothing too crazy. I've never gone viral. Um, you know, I've had a couple videos spike up for whatever reason, but I've never been able to, like, uh, maintain some sort of momentum with that. For the past 10 years that I've been on YouTube, I've sort of used it as a platform just to get my own original content out there, whether it was my own short films or promotional material or uh, stuff to, you know, to put my wrestling matches or my stand-up comedy on. I just think it's kind of interesting to see what's been going on with YouTube over the course of the past couple of years. In the sense that, you know, obviously it's become commercialized and corporatized and all these buzzwords. And honestly, if you think about it, I, you know, YouTube kind of does have to do this. Like, I can understand why they're doing this. They just hired 10,000 people in their office to go through videos and to, you know, have a more, I guess, a more thorough look at these videos to make sure, you know, this is something they want to put advertisements on or not. Because they need to make sure that the advertisers keep coming back to the platform and pumping money in. It's it's a give and take. So, in a sense, someone like me who doesn't upload regularly um, and doesn't post that often or whatever, or essentially my content is irrelevant to YouTube. I can post it anywhere. It's not, it doesn't really help keep the YouTube ecosystem alive. It's just, you know, standstill content. Maybe it doesn't make sense for me for them to be going through my videos when they could use that time to go through uh, someone who does post regularly and someone who does have a, a following on this channel. You know, it only makes sense for them to, to do that. Have more of a focus on as less people as possible. There's so much content being pumped into YouTube every single day. And, you know, rightfully so, the money's in the advertisements. So they got to focus on, on pleasing the advertisers, um, and a channel like mine doesn't do that. And you know, and I get that, I understand that. I think that's just a natural progression of life in terms of what happens to a platform like YouTube, and that's what it, that's what YouTube is is a platform, um, and it's a platform not just for small creators or big creators, but yeah, for talk shows. You know, for if you, I mean, the fact is. People are watching less and less television, and it's only natural for those people that are on television to put their stuff up on on YouTube, and it becomes more accessible. More people who aren't gonna, who don't have a even have a cable box, or aren't gonna stay up to watch late night with Jimmy Fallon. They could just go on YouTube, watch whatever clips they want, you know, all the viral clips, and it's all right there. Or they could do it on Facebook now, and it's interesting because Facebook now is starting to. You know, they have their own, um, and it's, it's interesting because Facebook now has their their own uh, video platform, and, and now they're starting to focus on creating their own content. A lot of companies are teaming up with Facebook to make original programming for what they have, they call Facebook Watch. I mean, this is the, the future of I, I think social media especially with a big platform like facebook and youtube it only makes sense for them to go this direction and there was going to be a crackdown regardless you know once you start climbing up that corporate ladder and stuff the, the more regulated it's gonna be um i don't know in a sense i kind of regret maybe not jumping onto that that youtube train when it was like hot which would have been like somewhere in that pocket of the past five years where creators kind of had a chance to really grow and be independent, um, you know, have their stuff monetized, not worried about that getting taken away. But the fact of the matter is I did, I dropped the ball. So I cannot be mad at YouTube 
for taking away my monetization. Um, am I, does it give me a new goal? I mean, again, YouTube is never my career. I have made maybe, the fact is I've made maybe $10 um, over the course, I've made maybe one dollar a year. If 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 that's the case, if I've maybe made ten dollars on off YouTube ads, um, I've maybe made a dollar a year off of YouTube. So I can't honestly say that you know this affects me. But maybe it was a wake up call. Maybe it was uh, maybe it was just a message to me of like, hey, dude, you had ten years. To get your to stack your game up to get your followers, and you drop the ball, and um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think that this should discourage people that want to be YouTubers and make this their full time gig, and make money off of the thing. I think there's obviously always potential for growth, um, and it's just a matter of building the following. And you do that on not just YouTube. You do that on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Any platform you can get your hands on to grow an audience and get them to follow you to YouTube. And then you can, you know, all you need is a thousand subscribers. And once you get there, you know, it's it's still going to be a grind. It's always going to be a grind. They've been kind of starting up their own channels and they're kind of just doing their own thing based off of that. But I just think that's kind of interesting because like with them, all they, you know, it's a lot easier for them. You know, I think Will Smith has like a YouTube channel and he does like vlogs, but I can bet you like all he's, he's, first of all, he lives an interesting life. He's Will Smith. He does his vlog, right? And then he has someone edit it for him and put it up on the channel and do that, the annotations and the description and all, all that good stuff. So, like, he kind of doesn't even have to worry about it. That's one of my goals is to get to a point where I can grow enough of a following. I can bring them to my channel. And I can grow it from there. And then just kind of get that momentum going. I'm not discouraged. I'm not going to stop using YouTube. I'm not going to stop trying to make new videos and create new content. Um, as a YouTube creator... Obviously, I still have to find my voice and what my channel is going to be, but I think I'm not even worried about that because I said I have my outside ventures that I'm doing now, and all YouTube is going to be for me is just a platform. So, you know, for those of you that are worried, what does this mean for me? Am I not going to be monetized now? Um, you know, I I would say don't don't get discouraged. Remember. This is just a platform just like any other social media service. And, you know, the people that have made it big on social media and have grown their following and now have made careers out of social media, you know, these people can do it. You can too. You know, and all it takes is that one moment. All it takes is that one month, that one year, that one good year that you, you know, you know, uh, that momentum to kind of build it and keep going. I've seen tons of people... Perfect example is that the, the Cash Me Outside, Bad Barbie, Cash Me Outside girl, like, she had an op, you know, she could have just had her moment on Dr. Phil, and that would have been it, but she kept that momentum going, and now she's built an empire, like, you want to talk, I've been on YouTube 10 years, she's been on YouTube maybe 10 months, and she's gotten w way more followers and reviews than I have, and, 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 and that's, and that's earned, because she has her following, and she brought that following with her, and she kept her momentum going. She had that one moment in the sun, that one moment, and she made the most of it. Like, people can 
you know, talk that girl down all they want and discredit her. But again, this is, she could have, that could have just been a one and done thing, right? I mean, we see that on the internet every single day of like people, you know, they have their viral video, they have that viral moment and then that's it. You never see them again, but she's managed to turn this into something. She's turned it into a career. You know, she's a certified a social media star. And I think that's very condemnable. I think that's very, you know, you, you got to I you gotta have respect for that, man. Whether you agree with her or not, I mean, it's, you got to give her props what props are due. So, yeah, that's my story of a failed one. one maybe, like I said, maybe one day you'll see ads on this video. But if you don't, then just enjoy it. Maybe this is your one place of virtue. You know, that enjoy this. That's what you got to kind of enjoy about small creators. They're not under that corporate umbrella just yet. And enjoy that while you still can. Because things aren't going to have to change and things get regulated once you climb up the corporate ladder. And that's just, again, a national problem. If you enjoyed the video, throw me a like, I guess. Subscribe. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just, I'm just here to upload stuff and use this as a, a place to drop gigabytes of footage that um, I'd like to like have stored in a cloud and to have be able to be accessed by people, and, you know, so I have some sort of legacy or something. I don't know. Thank you guys very much. I've been your boy, the Unpredictable J. George, and have a good day.